So let's take a look now at how we find the equation of a cubic if we're given its graph. And on that graph we're given the key roots as well as the y-intercept or it can also work if you're just given another point. So in this one here you can see that with our roots it cuts through every single time. So when we're using these roots what we want to do here is we know that we've got linear factors. So when we go to do this we know that we can put our function into the notation of a and then the uh, three linear factors that we've got here. So the first one is going to be the root of negative 1, so the linear factor will be x plus 1. The second linear factor, or the root, is positive 2, so the second linear factor is x take 2. And the third linear factor is going to be the root of 4, which is x take 4. Just keep in mind that when we're putting them back in here, we need to change the signs of them. But the thing is, we need to determine the value of this a here, because we haven't defined this exact polynomial yet. What we've defined is just a cubic of some kind that has, like, cuts through at these points. So to define this exact cubic, we need to substitute another point in. Another point other than the x-intercepts that we've used so far. Now, the point that we've been given is the y-intercept. So what that is saying here is when x is equal to 0, our y here is going to be equal to negative 8. So what we do essentially is we substitute these values in here and we solve for what this a value would actually be. So when y is equal to negative 8, uh, our x is going to be equal to 0, so this will be 1 overall, 0 take 2 is negative 2, 0 take 4 is negative 4. So from here I want to just multiply this part here out, so this negative 8 here will be equal to negative times negative will be positive, so it will be 8 a, and now dividing both sides by our 8 here, we'll find that our a value is going to be equal to negative 1 for this to be true. So what we do is we substitute this a value back into here, and we've found the equation for the cubic polynomial that's graphed here. So therefore, our y will equal negative 1, so which is just negative, uh, our x plus 1, our x take 2, and our x take 4. So that there is the equation that represents this cubic polynomial that I've got here. So moving on to the next one that I've got here, what's different about this one that this one here didn't have is it's got a repeated root as well as a um, linear root that's where it's just cutting through. Now with our repeated root we know that that's going to be that linear factor all squared. So when we're going to graph this just generally, what we know is we've got this root here, which we just do what we did before. So this will be x plus 3 because it just cuts through. But this one here, if I just represent the linear root, so that will be 3x take 2. But because it's only touching here, we need to square this factor here. And from here, we follow the same sort of steps. We've got the general graph for our cubic, but we've got to find the value of a. So we've got to substitute another point. I've got the y-intercept here. So that tells us that when x is equal to 0, our y is going to be equal to 6. So we substitute that back in. 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 times 0 is 0. So 0 take 2 is negative 2. That's going to be squared. So now... Uh, we've got negative 2 squared is positive 4, 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, so our a here is going to be 6 over 12 or 1 over 2. Now because we've got our a value we substitute that back into here and we've found the equation for our cubic polynomial. So therefore our y is equal to a half because that was our a, our x plus 3 and our 3x take 2 all squared like so. Now it's probably important to note that it doesn't really matter what order you put these linear factors in, so if you're in the habit of putting that one over here first, which is something I commonly do, it doesn't really matter which order you place them. But the key steps here I guess are to identify the types of roots that you've got, because that will tell you the types of factors that you have within your cubic that you've got. Once you've identified that, represent it in this uh, factorised form like I've got here, and then you need to identify what the value of a of these are going to be by substituting another point. It doesn't have to be the y-intercept, 
but it does have to be a different point than the X intercepts that you've used to get to this stage here. Once you've done that, you solve for the A value and you substitute the A value back into your polynomial here or your function, and you've found the equation for your cubic function.